In this video, we're going to discuss concentration cells. So in previous videos, we discussed the idea of an equilibrium of electron transfer. As long as we had a reasonable voltage difference between the reductant and the oxidant, we really didn't have to be concerned about it. The K would be enormously large in favor of the products. Well, that was true for standard voltaic cells where you have two different species, one with a higher potential than the other. It is possible, however, to make a system out of only one material. So we can imagine a system where I've got copper on both sides and I have copper two plus in solution. Now, first we wouldn't think, why would that transfer electrons? And all things being equal, they won't any more in one direction or the other. We have a connection, we have a bunch of coppers in the middle. We have a bunch of copper two pluses on the outside. And we have exactly the same on the other side. Now, randomly, electrons still will transfer. One of these ions can just bump in, and like, those electrons are pretty free-flowing. They could wrap around it. That would pull electrons in, pull electrons in. Maybe it would pull it from somewhere else, and another copper would break free on the same side. Or maybe it would pull it through the wire, and some copper on the other side would break free. But you have an equal opportunity chance for the left side to do the same. Electrons would flow out around it, they'd steal electrons from other things, maybe some copper here would break free, but it also could simply pull it through the wire and have some other copper here break off. You're just as likely to have the random electron motion go one way or the other. Because they're both copper, neither side is more favorable. Neither side is more attractive of electrons. However, you still need those ions to impact. We need to transfer the electrons, which means we need something to transfer them to. So what you can change here, even though it isn't the potential difference of the material, you can change how much of the material there is. Your copper solid is still going to be the same concentration. It's a solid. But your solutions, you could have one with far more copper two pluses and the other with far less. In doing so, by random chance, you're just going to have more of the left side picking up electrons. If there's 100 times more ions over there, there's 100 times more chances it'll steal electrons. Over time, that means the left side is going to start plating onto its bar. There's going to be less things in solution as they stick and stick to the bar. Well, every one of them that sticks creates some copper 2 plus on the right side. And so for every one of those on the left that goes away, we increase more on the right, which means now there's more opportunities to steal electrons on the right side. This is a rate issue. The left side had a higher initial rate of stealing electrons than the right side. And so as a result, early on, we had a very good rate flowing to the left and a very small rate flowing to the right. As time goes on, we get a smaller rate flowing to the left as we run out of free ions. And we get a bigger rate flowing to the right as we create more ions that could then bounce back into the bar and try to steal electrons. They will eventually be equal. The two solutions will eventually reach equilibrium when their concentrations are the same. We can actually create a current that favors one direction if the concentrations are different, simply due to the random motions more likely occurring in the direction that has the greater concentration. Well, this is purely equilibrium. So we need to play a little bit with our equations. Remember that the standard Gibbs free energy is going to be equal to negative NF E naught of the cell. So if we're at 298, we have one molar, one atmosphere, everything. Our voltage potential times the moles of electrons we're transferring times Faraday constant would equal our available free energy. Well, we also have the relation that the actual Gibbs energy at any given moment is equal to the standard state energy plus RT ln of Q, the present quotient of the reaction. Taking these together, we can say that, well, the present free energy at 
non-standard state, when things have been running for a while, that's going to be equal to whatever it was at the standard state, so NF E not cell, plus RT LN of Q. So at standard states, we're going to have the standard state potential times the moles of electrons times Faraday constant. At some non-standard state, it's going to be the same, just at a non-standard value for the voltage. But that's going to require the adjustment from the standard state. We'll rearrange, plug in for a few values here. The present voltage is going to be equal to the voltage at the standard state minus RT over NF LN of Q. If we want to adjust this out of natural log, the present cell potential is equal to the standard state cell potential minus 0 0.0592 volts for electrons in the formula log Q. This is the Nernst equation. And the reason why we modified the equilibrium expression in the previous video to log from natural log. Nernst equation is done in log, and so all of our equilibrium reaction calculations are done in log. This will actually allow us to calculate both our concentration cell, where our concentration is different, but also the cell potential as we use up a voltaic cell. If our concentrations have changed over time, away from the standard state, what will our voltage be? Old batteries that lost voltage as they got used because they weren't solid state could use this calculation to figure out just what their voltage would be as they consume themselves. However, we're looking at this for concentration cells. Well, in our copper example, what would the E naught for the cell be? Well, copper 2 plus plus copper solid was effectively in equilibrium with copper solid and copper 2 plus. There was no cell potential. Since they were the same metal on both sides, there was no difference. They equally wanted to draw those electrons towards them. And so our E naught for the cell was zero in our concentration cell. All of the electron transfer potential is based purely on the concentration difference, the Q difference. So what is the cell potential of our concentration cell? Well, zero minus 0 0.0592 volts per electron log of the Q value. Well, what is our Q value going to be? Well, the solids don't show up in our equilibrium expression because their concentrations don't change. So our Q value is just products over reactants. And we only have the two solutions. Net effect of this is that we're going to have a concentration of copper 2 plus from the dilute side over the concentration of copper 2 plus from the concentrated side. So if we imagine our concentration cell of copper, let's make one side one molar copper 2 plus, and the other side 0 0.01 molar copper 2 plus with a salt bridge. Just logically, I have 100 times more copper ions on the left. That's 100 times more impacts. It should be 100 times more favorable to pull electrons in that direction. And so at this moment, when I have these differences in concentration, what is my cell potential purely based on the concentration differences of my ions? E cell is going to be equal to negative 0.0592 volts. It's copper transferring two electrons, and it's going to be log of 0.01 over 1. What we'll find is the E cell is 0.0592 volts. That's because the log of 0 0.01 is negative 2, so that'll cancel our 2 below and the negative. And so in this case, if you're transferring two electrons and you have a difference in concentration of 100 fold, your E cell for that concentration is 0 0.0592 volts.